I'm sitting with my friend here, this amazing tree in the middle of the jungle in the Cancun hotel zone in an ancient city called San Miguelito. And there's the tallest pyramid in the Cancun area here um, on the peninsula where the hotel zone is today. And it's really this magical city and the jungle's incredible. And, and I haven't seen a single person in here apart from the security, um, just because I guess the tourists are on the beach and drinking and in the Vegas style Coco Bongo and all that. But uh, so it's amazing that, you know, you come here, no one's here. You go to Chichen Itza and there's just a million people. It's a Disneyland of pyramids and uh, you can't climb anything. And whereas here you have way more intimacy with the monuments. Um, and it's just this little sliver of land surrounded by, you know, some of the most expensive resorts in the world. So I want to reflect on something I think is really interesting, um, just kind of going through here in the museum, is San Miguelito is obviously a Spanish word, and it's a saint of the Catholic Church, a spirit of the Catholic Church. So it's a certain kind of cultural name, and I'm sure the Mayans had a very different name for this place, um, and had a very different culture than the Spanish culture. And Cancun's an interesting place because it actually means the place of snakes or the den of snakes. And the Spanish, when they arrived, they were freaked out that these people worship snakes, the serpent. And a lot of the world's cultures actually do. But there's certain cultures that don't that actually do the reverse. Um, and Christianity is one of them. And in Christianity, the serpent tempted you know, Adam and Eve in the, in the Garden of Eden. And there was that human fall from living in the forest, from the animistic way uh, where, you know, we fell into this, you know, nightmare called history in a sense, uh, this tragedy, this comedy called history in a way where humans have just, you know, grown and uh, conquered each other and it's been a killing spree for about 5,000 years now. Um, but it's interesting, this serpent, this uh, energy we have, you know, in the East they call it the Kundalini Force. You know, it's coiled at the base of your sp spine and through meditation and good works and and spiritual development you can you know move it up into your higher chakras where it's not this dense opaque energy that causes you lust and greed and envy and all the seven deadly sins but can be purified into spiritual progress enlightening consciousness you know higher creativity and service to a community um, the kind of stuff that we all aspire to so you know in the Christian culture they really demonize this this serpent spirit um, but it's part of who we are and uh, you know trying to like domesticate the world as the Christian, now the Western secular culture does, um, is really a, at the root of our problems today. You know, we have to coexist with nature and respect that we're part of nature, not try to like conquer it and, and, and subdue it and have this complete dominion over it. Because obviously the dominion of Christians over nature has not worked out very well. You know, you know, like for example, like the British culture has cut down half the world's forests. You know, uh, Christians disproportionately have destroyed this planet. Um, and that's not to blame anyone, but it's just interesting how um, certain cultures have to erase other cultures. Um, and obviously the culture here has been erased as much as possible. You read about how the ancient monuments of, of Tulum and, 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 and the, here and even Chichen Itza, you know, often the Spanish would, would desecrate the most holy temples and use it to build their houses and, and, and use it for their buildings and stuff and not respect it, not respect history, other people's culture. Obviously when you conquer, you destroy, you erase. Um, but is that still the way the world works today? You know, obviously conquest is a different, it's a more of a mental slavery today of conquering people's minds. But I think looking at history and why people do what they do, why certain viewpoints cannot tolerate diversity of other viewpoints and other people and, and all that is, is something that, you know, history is what it is, but maybe we can wake up from what's happened and what this nightmare has been for a lot of people. Um, obviously there's a winners and losers in any game and in, in, in history and the most powerful, the most violent, you know, uh, uh, people, rulers ultimately uh, conquer. And that's not to say the Mayan cultures weren't like that as well in many ways. Um, they just didn't have the resources to, to defend their land essentially. And that's the story of history. The human condition is in every religion, is in every culture. Um, people are never satisfied and they want more and people that can get away with murder and theft and, and ruling by decree often do it. Um, it's, you know, democracy and some of the things we enjoy today, um, you know, have been a very brief time in history and they're already kind of um, not thriving as uh, in most people's view. 
Um, so it's interesting, you know, the Judeo-Christian cultures are very interesting in their one God monotheism and kind of the belief in the West recently has been that there's an evolution from animistic to polytheistic to, to literacy cultures that then worship words and concepts and abstractions like the word God. And actually the word God is interesting because it's actually a Germanic word, um, proto-Germanic uh, language, it means to invoke, uh, to invoke spirits. Um, and that's really what you're doing when you're praying. Um, you're invoking the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, to hopefully inspire you to then want to do what you're praying for or, 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 or overcome what you want to overcome. Um, but it's interesting that Judeo-Christian cultures is one God, this one way, this one book, you know, that's been mistranslated so many times and changed and all this stuff. And it's not even the word of Jesus because it was written by people, and written by, for example, a lot of it was written by Paul. And he wasn't necessarily the best guy and he twisted a lot of Jesus' message. You know, so it's interesting that if you don't look at history, you don't really know what the truth is. If you don't question everything, even the most holy things, you should question those the most. Because that's where the biggest lies are, you know, the fake history we're taught. You know that you know things are erased um, and this Mayan civilization here is one example the Mayan people are still here you can see them around you know they're certainly an underclass here um, but they'll be here in a thousand years and I wonder if this modern experiment will be here uh, in a hundred years even um, it's just so unsustainable and and Cancun while a beautiful place and it's been very interesting to be here um, it's definitely not a very sustainable place. Uh, it's a plastic uh, resort. Um, so uh, beautiful place though. I'm not trying to, to, to disparage Cancun in any way. It's humans want to experience, you know, vacation and this is a vacation, you know, paradise. But it's just like, how sustainable is it in the long term? And, and uh, these pyramids, the Mayans pyramids, they'll be here in a thousand years and very little of of the modern civilization will be around anymore. It's not built for time. Um, secular culture is really doesn't think about the future. Like more, the more secular someone is, the more highly educated someone is in a Western institution today, the less likely to have any children at, at all. Um, there's not like a big investment in the future anymore. It's like live for the now and uh, enjoy yourself and 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 uh, you know have champagne on the deck of the Titanic kind of thing culture today. But um, but by studying the past, you can learn from the past. You can learn who you are, where you come from, your culture, your civilization, whatever, or someone else's. Learn all about it. Find roots in the past. Hopefully in your own ancestry, because I think really people will know that. They can then relate to other people, not as this superior thing, but as being rooted in something, in some land somewhere. Um, and I hope, you know, that is the future, where we, we awaken to where we came from and where we can go together. And, you know, people that history has tried to erase, you know, maybe, you know, that famous saying, it's like you tried to destroy us and eliminate us, but we were seeds and we grew back. And I think that's what nature is going to do. And these abstractions we worship today, you know, if we don't really in our hearts feel what they're really pointing at, then they aren't really that powerful. And the spirit, the Holy Spirit, the animistic spirit of nature, whatever you want to believe in is okay. We should all form our own belief systems and not rely on other people's authority who are usually wrong. Experts are usually wrong. Priests are often, you know, not the most interesting people because they're just in these institutions that require them to conform in such a rigid way. And that's just not the most interesting people. They, they're not in these, these top-down human institutions that always tend toward corruption and, and the, the, the degeneration of the human condition, entropy. Whereas I think the most interesting people are the wizards in the forest, the indigenous healers, you know, the creators, the geniuses, the polymaths, the people that move history forward, the humanitarians, the Nikola Teslas of history, the, the uh, Jagadrandris Bose, you know, uh, Benjamin Franklin, you know, all these people in history, Lao Tzu, uh, Krishna, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, you know, um, uh, all these people that, you know, pushed people to be something more than they thought was possible and, 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 and encouraged this flower, flowering of culture and, 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 uh, and religion and spirit that leads to these amazing temples to the human spirit that you have here um, at San Miguelito and all over the world. So I'm really amazed to be here um, in the middle of this hotel zone in the most concrete jungle. Um, this spectacular place, this beach paradise in an ancient city uh, with no one here, barely. <laughs> okay, signing off, Kyle here. If you like this video, uh, like and share it, uh, comment. Um, 
I'd love to hear, you know, what's your favorite, you know, ancient monument uh, place you've gone, maybe where you live um, to, to pray, to meditate, to be present, whether a church or some other kind of temple or an ancient city like this. Um, we all live in places that have um, very ancient buildings that uh, are very good places to be present in and uh, really feel the spirit of life in. All right, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear. I love these answers to these kind of questions.